He is strong with the force, but talent without training is nothing. I will give my life to protect the child, but he will not be safe until he masters his abilities. Here's your look at the Gentle Giant Limited, Star Wars Milestones, the child one-half scale statue. Designed, modeled, and prototyped using top-of-the-line 3D technology, this exclusive one-half-scale statue represents the next in their new collection from their ongoing Star Wars saga. Each statue is hand-cast, hand-painted, and hand-numbered with a limited-edition certificate of authenticity. May the Force be with you. The milestone's Star Wars Grogu is limited to 5,000 pieces worldwide. Aren't you just the most adorable thing ever? Focus, focus, focus. Before we get a closer look at the Gentle Giant Star Wars The Child One Half Scale statue, I'm going to have to stay focused on this review. The first thing we're going to want to do is first figure out how tall Grogu stands. So I'm going to avoid hitting the bottom of the base because, of course, that will throw off just how high the figure stands. I'm going to take it right to the very top of his head. According to the readouts, the child, one half scale statue, is 7.3 inches in height. We can switch that over to centimeters, revealing that the statue is just a little over 18 and a half, 18.6 centimeters to be exact. A big thank you to the folks over at Diamond Select that provided the sample of the one second or one half scale, the child that we could have a look at in this review. To come, of course, included with these statues, you would expect to see a trading card, and this one is no different. To come included with Grogu, you get yourself a trading card that features the statue image along the top there. Just an absolutely awesome looking statue. Down below from there, you've got Gentle Giant Limited in the far right corner. And then in the middle, you've got Star Wars The Child one second or one half scale. As being this is a one half sized version of what the child would normally have looked like. Flipping around to the back of the trading card, you've got your yourself the certificate of authenticity. The child one second, one half scale statue. And of the limited, very limited release of 5,000 pieces worldwide, mine so happens to be 1,710. And down below that, you've got Gentle Giant's website. Feel free to go over to their site and see the other collectibles and statues that they're producing from Star Wars by going to the website at www.gentlegiantlimited.com forward slash star dash wars. Looking at the display base that the child is standing on top of, it's a lot of brown, a lot of brown. Various different shades of brown, yes, and there's a few little areas like stones and pebbles that are painted differently in gray, but it's a very muddy looking terrain. It's not necessarily a bad thing at all. In fact, as you're spinning it around, sculpting certainly does deliver a nice textured looking display base, and the way that they painted it almost has a nice sheen to it, so it looks like it's still wet. It doesn't bother me again the fact that they went with such dark colors here, the earthly tones of the brown. Actually, I find complement then the lighter colors when we look at the rest of the statue, especially when you're looking at the cloak being a lighter beige like this. I think complementary going with the brown is the best route they could have gone. Very carefully, very carefully tilting the statue up so you can see underneath. Underneath the base, you're treated to Gentle Giant Limited, the child, one half or one second scale statue, limited edition number, and it's the same number as we saw earlier on the Certificate of Authenticity. Something that you'll also see present here on the bottom of the base are these rubberized feet. They serve certainly a twofold, one of which not to scratch the surface, of course, wherever you decide to display the statue for yourself, but also when you were looking, say, down the road to part ways with a statue. Your certificate of authenticity, as well as this number right here, are very crucial. By, in a way, having this lifted off of the surface that you are displaying the statue on, and if this statue shifts around at all, you really don't want to cause damage to specifically this number right here. Because those rubberized feet are lifting just off the surface by just a slight bit, it then prevents the number on the bottom of the base from rubbing off as you're moving the statue around. Of course, for the main part of the statue is the child itself. The child has bowl with liquid in hand. What they probably have done in a case like this is the liquid that's inside the bowl isn't probably a separate piece. In fact, what they probably have done instead is they've molded the line to where the liquid would be as part of the main mold of the bowl. They have painted it the same rusted brown color as the bowl was, but then by adding a clear finish to the top of it, hopefully the light is being able to pick that up, it does in a way then look like it's got liquid inside the bowl. It's simple, it's effective, and it definitely does work. 
Now, as for Grogu, this is something I did want to spend some time talking about, is the way that they handled the paint here. A different approach than what we've normally seen with Gentle Giant releases in the past. When you're seeing a statue like this, a lot of times you're probably going to have this and you're putting it on display and you're going to be looking at further way that the colors are going to blend in a little bit more. But the reason why I want to bring this so close the way that I am here is I really want to show you guys up close and personal the way that they handled the paint here on Grogu's face and, of course, against his arms as well. If you've ever done watercolor paints, the reason why I'm saying watercolor specifically, watercolor paints work really well to blend the colors, but you have to do them in layers. You have to kind of put the lighter colors first, and then you have to layer the darker colors over top of it while not bleeding too much into the lighter colors that you just applied. In the way that they've handled Grogu's skin, I feel like it almost was the same approach with watercolor paints. They had to probably apply a lighter color of paint, and then the more medium colored greens they've added over top of it. In that way, you've almost got a transition of color, but still the colors are unique to themselves and they still stand out. So like the cheek, for example, the lips, just the, the area right above the eyebrows area as well, the eyelids are more of a lighter color. Then on top of it, they've brushed a more darker color of green, which makes, makes up the majority of his face. And then on top of that, they've layered a dark layer of darker green. You can see more so of it when it's banding across the wrinkle of its forehead. Again, I kind of get that vibe of watercolor paints when I'm looking at this. It's a really effective approach because, again, you've still got the colors that blend in together, almost transitioning the lighter to the darker, but the colors still stand out and they're still unique to themselves. Even like the areas of the pink around the eyes, they don't really blend in necessarily to the green that's around it. It's there, but they are still standing out. Same with the coloring of the ears. The, the pink on the interior of the ear, as you get closer to the ear canal, gets a little bit further out. The green very much is a separate color from the rest of the pink. And yet when you're seeing it from a distance, you really see more of a transitioning of color. That's one of the effective uses of using watercolor paints. Something I also really appreciate about this piece, when you're looking at close like this, is the speckling that they've done across the entire forehead, really across the head in, in general. The little speckles of paint, as you can see, is across the top of the head, the tops of the ears. And even as I spin this around, all the use of those speckles across the surface. It really, again, adds a nice level of realism to it. By far, one of my favorite things, though, about this statue, and it involves me then having to spin it back around, is those eyes. Similar, I suppose, the same approach they did with the liquid in the bowl. They've a applied like a clear coat to it. And I don't know if you can actually see it or not, but you can almost even see the little lines of the irises. You see them right there? And by, of course, adding the clear coat of finish across the top of it, the light bounces then off of it, and it makes the eyes and the face really as a whole much more realistic. Really like the way they've done that. Paint isn't the only thing I really like about this child statue. It's all this very detailed texturing that they've also added to his cloak. Yes, there is a lot of beige when you're seeing it across here. Beige on top of beige. But I tell you, though, when you're having it down on a shelf and you've got natural light hitting it, or even just lamp light, it casts then additional shadowing that's sometimes painting it. If you're adding the darker paint, some, sometimes that loses the illusion. If you keep it neutral to this coloring, then you've got natural shadowing forming, settling down on it, to the almost the point where I feel like I could go up there and start pinching on the fabric. But again, like it's a lot of beige, but there's a lot of nice detailing that they've added in there. Not only the majority of the surface, sort of this basket woven patterning, but all these small little details that you only really appreciate when you see it up close like this. The little frayed bottom edges of his cloak, for example, the stitch lines running up the middle, and even the rougher two strips of fabric that would have been sewn together. How you've got the extra little kind of string pieces on the sides really all add and contribute to the realism of this statue. Now, like I said, there's a lot of beige and there's a lot of beige on top of beige where they have added a little bit of darker shadowing, and I think it works well in these areas alone, is the cuffs of the sleeves and the cuff that goes across the collar, the main collar piece. Not only is the texturing different, but here's where they've added the dark shadowing. I'm glad they only kept it here and didn't feel the need to add it anywhere else on the statue. That is then, of course, when you are displaying the piece for yourself, the, the, the light, like I said, the light when you're having it hitting onto the statue, I think casts then natural shadows. Sometimes companies feel inclined to want to add excessive amounts of shadowing, darker areas of costumes. And sometimes when you're seeing it with natural light or just lamp light shining down on it, it loses again some of that illusion. 
I think by keeping the colors very neutral, pulling back the amount of paint that they felt the need to add on top of the statue, I think you have a much more realistic approach. And again, like I said, with the watercolor approach that they did with the face, while it doesn't give as much the realism to Grogu's face and skin, I, I kind of like it. I kind of like that watercolor approach that they did with the paint, that you have a more softer approach when it came to the coloring of his skin. I really like how the Gentle Giant Star Wars Milestones child statue turned out. Now, one of the things I did talk about in this review was the approach that they handled with painting Grogu's face or just skin in general. I sort of compared it to watercolor paints. Now, that may not have the most realistic description for it. You may think to yourself, I, I kind of wish that they hadn't gone the route that they did. But keeping in mind as well that when we are looking at statues or collectibles or whatever it is here on this channel, I have three direct studio lights shining down, not only on the thing I'm reviewing, but also on me as well. I get myself quite the considerable tan. So when we were looking at Grogu up close and personal like this, you may have more the subtle look of the statue when you're getting it, say, in a living space, an office, maybe even in your living room where you don't have light directly shining down on it. One of the benefits and sort of one of the negative things of looking at things in studio lights that you're also seeing the way that things are painted with direct light shining down on it. The more subtle approach of the way that they handled the paint would only look that much better when you have the statue, and like I said, in an area where there's not direct light shining down on it. The Grogu is a good size as well. This is a one half or one second scale statue, which basically means it's about half the size of what Grogu would have looked like in the series. For that, it's a great statue to pick up if you don't want to have a full-sized Grogu on display. You sort of get the next best thing by a half-size version of it, with all the details and all the little nuances that the child brought to, well, to the Mandalorian in the first place, and made him such a popular character from the series. A big thank you to the folks over at Diamond Select that provided this sample of the Star Wars Milestones Child statue that we could have a look at in this review. Have you picked this one up for yourself? Or if not, if not yet, let me know down below in the comments section if this is a statue you would like to, like to pick up, or just weigh in your thoughts of what you think of the statue down below in the comments section. If you guys are also new to this channel, enjoying all the content you're seeing, be sure to hit that subscribe button down below, and as well, turn on the bell notification, and keep your peepers peeled to this channel, because we will be looking at more Diamond Select Star Wars statues, as well as other Diamond Select reviews as well. There's lots of stuff coming your way, guys. So as always, thanks for watching. See you guys next time.